Good evening. I now call to order the July 31st, 2023 Mayor and Alderman regularly scheduled meeting, this time at 4.30, uh, which we will discuss times at a later time during the meeting. But it is now 4.30 and we will call to order this meeting. Uh, the chaplain will say our prayer. Please pray with me. Lord God, our Father and Governor, thank you for your wonderful and awesome creation. Help us always to work to conserve it. Thank you for all the civil servants who work here. We sometimes forget how important they are to our community, both in their jobs and as individuals. Watch over all our first responders, especially the police, firemen, and EMTs. Keep them safe. Bless the town of Mount Eagle. Bless its people. Let Mount Eagle become known as a friendly place, a place of hospitality, a place where the needs of our neighbors are met with love and compassion. Father, bless our mayor and city council. Give them the wisdom you once gave King Solomon as they deliberate this evening and as they guide this town. Bless all those who are gathered here and all who live in our community. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay. If we can have the roll call vote, please. Jessica? Here. Dory? Here. Dana? Here. Nate? Here. 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 Okay, next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. I'll accept a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. I move 
move that we accept the minutes from our last meeting in May. Thank you. Second. Second. Is there any discussion or corrections or additions to the minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. How many sets of minutes were there? Just the one? Oh, I'm sorry. And then we needed a motion to approve the public hearing of the same date. Is there a motion for that? I'll make a motion to approve the public hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion or corrections to the public hearing minutes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, citizens' comments. Anyone wish to be heard at this time? Mr. Lay. I can wait till the end. You may address some of the questions I have. Thank you. That would be fine. We will certainly reserve a spot at the end of the meeting for the comments. Okay, Any other citizen comments wish to be heard? Okay. Mayor's communications. A uh, couple of things just for information on what we're doing. Um, what I've done just basically, which was discussed at the last meeting and previous meetings, I signed an agreement with the Lindhurst uh, organization that is uh, prepared to send us $10,000 to fund the work that uh, Nate Wilson is heading with the uh, Architect uh, Foundation. So it's specific purposes. It was for that. I signed the agreement. When it comes back, they will send us the funds. They have to be accounted for with receipts and used only for that project. But uh, we certainly thank the Lindhurst uh, organization for that donation. I should make a quick comment about the time of this meeting and time of other meetings. These are test times to see what kind of reaction we get from the citizens as well as the aldermen. If it's too early, that's one thing. If 6 o'clock was an issue with dinner, that's another thing. Obviously, we're not going to meet everyone's schedule. It's what's really convenient for the masses. Uh, Ivan Michelle, if you would just briefly mention the other ways that they can view a meeting if they're not here. Okay, so on GCTV6 Facebook page, that is what is going live right now. And then once this meeting is over, uh, sometime this evening before I go to night night, um, I will upload it to YouTube, the Mon Eagle YouTube channel, which is also on the website. Thank you. That's all I have right now. Of course, I'll make comments as we go along. But um, it's important. Communication is important. There's no two ways about it. Finding a time where people can be here present is probably the challenge. So we'll work on that and do the best we can to pick a time and day that is uh, accepted. Maybe not satisfactory, but understood and accepted. A calendar of events. I have nothing. Uh, special now what I would like to do is plan a September 11th memorial type service like we did for uh, Memorial Day remembering the uh, first responders and the after effects thereof and uh, looking down the line a little bit uh, we should remember our veterans on Veterans Day November 11th Christmas is a little too early to talk about but believe it or not there are committees being formed for Christmas Day observance in town here with a uh, discussion of having the parade a little earlier than Tracy City but having it on the second weekend instead of the first weekend in December. As plans develop, we'll certainly get that information out. I just want to make you aware of some of the discussions and ongoing projects. The only other thing I have very quickly, you may have noticed a patch in the parking lot. There's some repairs needed in the older part of that uh, parking lot to my right, your left, uh, in and around the library area and the driveway between the two buildings. That patch is free. It's a test patch. We're going to see how it survives the weekends and the weather and the traffic. Uh, Keith Butner and I have been meeting with the contractor and we're just experimenting. So we can drive over it, take a look at it, but that's what we're doing. If it works, then we'll have a proposal uh, for the aldermen to uh, expend funds and see if they want to continue with that project. But that's what that patch is to my right, your left. And that's all I have. Uh, we can 
Uh, any comments on calendar from any of the aldermen? Um, oh. I need to remind everyone we have feast on the street. The food trucks is coming Thursday from 4 to 8. Okay. This Thursday in front of Harden Park, uh, 4 to 8 is the monthly visit of the uh, food trucks, which I understand have been very busy. They've, uh, I think Doreen has introduced them to the mountain. There were many here for uh, Mont Eagle um, Mountain uh, Chamber function that was here this past weekend. Uh, other organizations have requested their presence. So uh, as that goes on, it's fine to support them. And uh, they finish up, when is it, October, I think, is their last month? We usually go through October. Right. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the police department report. Yes, excuse me, no, come up. Okay. Uh, the other thing I was just reminded of, we're trying, first time in a little while, we're having a street dance September 2nd. Uh, they used to have them pretty frequently here uh, as days gone by, but uh, we want to see if there's any interest, so we're doing a street dance September 2nd, which is Labor Day weekend. Okay, Chief. Good afternoon, Mayor, Alderman, um, <coughs> citizens. Um, I don't know what's up there going to go over briefly, going to break a few things down. Um, the total, this is going to be from 615 uh, 2023 to 715 2023. The total number of calls received from the 911 dispatch center was 363 calls. The total number of reports taken was 47. The total number of citations written for the department was 59. The total number of traffic stops performed by the department was 147. And the total number of arrests made were 11. Um, the breakdown of the reports as follows. There was 23 of the reports are from arrest, vandalism, theft, and warrant reports. The other 24 were vehicle crashes. So those are kind of on the rise right now. We expected that to happen as the town grows. Um, nothing major. There's minor fender benders. So I bring that up because um, school is coming back in session. It's an opportunity for us to slow down, kind of be mindful of people backing out of parking lots. Um, so the, the next section, the breakdown, this is going to be from 315, 2023 to 415. The total number of calls received was 469. The next month was um, 503. You see that number's going up. That's when we really implemented the large influx of traffic control that we had. You know, I was getting a lot of people that were saying, well, you guys should be doing this, should be doing this, whatever the case may be. 506 was from 515 to 615. As you can see that this past month, it was 653. Um, that's going to be a direct reflection of um, police presence. 353. I mean, 363, I'm sorry, 363. That's, uh, that is uh, police presence. Um, so we've actually brought down the number which we were hoping would have happened in Mont Eagle. Obviously we want the numbers to come down and not rise. Now they will go up and down as the seasons happen. I don't expect them to hopefully get any higher than what we've seen in the past. Um, theft cases are down. Um, there, there were two theft cases of which I do want to, I'm not going to go into great detail on the actual cases. However, both of these cases were solved by the assistance of the citizens and um, Tracy City helping us out, along with the 911 dispatch center. So um, it just goes to show you when agencies work together, we do, and the citizens work together, we get things done quicker. So, um, and we are currently working, still working on some. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Doo -doo. Yeah, that's that's all I really have. Um, I just want to say that I'm really, really proud of. Um, the men and young lady that I have at the department, um, they have gone above and beyond. So we're, we're fortunate to have them. Indeed they have, and I quite agree. And I'm sure we all agree here. Thank you for your service. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, many, as I have said in the past, many of these traffic stops and issues were from citizens or contractors requesting it. Mm -hmm. So Correct. I think uh, 
we're moving in the right direction. Thank you for that. You have a new, you have a new officer appointed? Uh, we have female officer Cantrell, uh, Morgan Cantrell. She um, started with us uh, uh, two months ago. Um, so, yes, we have a, a female officer, which I'm pretty excited about. Are you looking for a new officer? We officer? are currently looking for a new officer, yes. Uh, currently, right now, we have a position available. So it, it used to be that new officers came in to the, to the first meeting and got introduced to the community and to the, to the council. Is that something you plan to continue? That's something that we can continue, yes. It's nice just to, to be able to, to, to put, put a face, face to the name and welcome, welcome folks here. Right. Um, I think I already mentioned this to you, but the second case, the, um, the stolen items from the truck, uh, that person contacted me and was over the top about how uh, professionally it was handled. So I wanted to pass that along. I have, actually, and um, the, you know, the guys were, were excited to hear that. He was excited to get his pack, his <laughs> yeah. pack back as well. So what's the deal on the, um, the pictures of the cars that you're looking at that we got on? Okay, so obviously we budget's an issue, right? Uh, we can't afford to go out and buy two brand new cars. So um, we kind of look at other um, sources. And that source there, there are two federal vehicles. Um, they got fairly low miles on them, and we can get both of those vehicles for the the amount of money allotted to us, so which is very rare that you can do that. You, you can't buy one vehicle for fifteen thousand, but we're able to get two. Um, the only thing we'll have to do is strike them up and put lights in them. So, so we we weren't aware the council wasn't aware that this was happening. Are we rotating some vehicles out of service? Do we have something break? What's um, how is this? So what is happening is is. Um, most of our vehicles are at the 97 to 100,000 mile mark right now. So they're all purchased, I'm assuming, about the same time, and they are going down. So um, this is to, and um, like right now, if I was fully staffed, I would not have a backup vehicle. And we all know we're one engine away or one wreck away from having an officer not having a vehicle to patrol in. So this is, these are the reasons why we do that. So are we going to take a vehicle out of service? Are we rotating one we, out? We will be, yes. Um, the mayor and I have talked about it. The, the one that's got the most mileage on it and that's been a thorn in our butt is the Dodge Charger. So we will be uh, taking that out of service um, and selling that and trying to get some money off of it. Therefore, um, as you've seen, we have that. It's, been a pr it's in our budget. Uh, and I just need uh, council approval to go ahead and purchase the two vehicles for a cost of uh, 15000 well, 14, one. For both of them? Yes. Total for both. You're getting both of them for 14100 And these are coming out of police operating budget? Or, or, yes. Or the cap yes. It's a capital account, isn't it? No. Oh. Capital yeah. account that was approved in the budget. Mm -hmm. You approved 15000 Okay, so is there a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept the report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a second? Wait a minute. Are we accepting the report or are we approving police car purchases? Just well, it's in the report. So you're approving police car purchases as well. <coughs> and approving police car purchases. Thank you. Is I'll, there a second? I'll second the approval of the police car purchases. Thank you. Is there any discussion on? Well, I don't. I don't know that we've ever approved the report. We asked for. We accept. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Done. Thank right. you, Chief. Next on the agenda, the fire chief. Fire department for 21 emergency calls for the day of July, or for the month of July, excuse me. The fire department, along with utilities departments, begin repairing the fire hydrants that were on the list for repair. So far, we've currently got cliff tops done, and a few others we move our way back into the middle of town. I think there was 29 on that list, and I, I think we're 25-ish, 24-ish, so it's dwindling down. Um, those of you that's not aware. Monica responds to the Martin Springs exit, the 143 east and westbound on the on the uh, Kimball side of the mountain. 
there was some stuff going on on Marion County through the commission side <clears throat> about the recognition of the fire districts. They're working on chartering their fire districts on that side. So I wanted to bring that to your attention that you are all aware that we we're responding to the 143 and put it in my, you know, my report. So when it's accepted and you approve my report, is read that it's kind of a, a known boundary on there. We, we've got the boundary on the Grundy side, but they're working on mapping that on the, on the Marion County side. Yeah, I know you had Excuse talked me. with the commission about um, about getting some compensation from Marion County for our reporting to calls that far out of our municipal boundaries. Is yeah. this part of that process, and do we think that's going to aid that? Or? The 143 has kind of always been the Mont Eagle coverage area, yeah. but it's, it's, it's not been in writing, I guess. We're trying to put it in writing as Marion County is chasing the chartering on it. As far as the compensation of it, I mean, that's all coming, you know, dependent from the trucking companies and stuff like that on insurance claims and then maybe further negotiation with Marion County to try to, you know, work out some kind of some kind of aid to budget the, the fire department for responding down there. Now, the 143, or 143 on east towards Kimball, that is known as, I mean, you know, the Hailtown Fire District is picking that up. Kimball will respond if needed, and I'm going to go the same way on that. If they need us for mutual aid for that end, and they, they call and request us and specify what they need, we'll respond on, I mean, on down the interstate farther, as long as we've got an engine, you know, a, a crew in service in Mont Eagle within city limits. That's the only, only way that we're going to respond down that far, and that'll have to be a mutual aid request. And then, excuse me, this is interstate only? This is interstate only, not, you know, it's, it only pertains to the interstate. Where's the Grundy side here? 127, Pelham. Yep, so we've, traditionally we go down the mountain, Pelham comes up the mountain on that side. Um, we've used about 25,000 gallons of water for the month. And members are working on registering for a complete department live burn exercise with the state in September. That's their live burns. So we're trying to get that in the September area. Right now it's like the 23rd, 24th. And that'll be a, a mandatory thing. Hopefully we'll have two or three different departments going to, along with us to that. That'll be in Bell Buckle at the Fire Academy. Um, the department continues to work with the public and our, our public activities of selling food at the Fresh Mess Market on Monday evening. They've done a, a Boston Butt Smoke fundraiser, contributing to the volunteer fund to purchase T-shirt and member equipment. I think they're very successful with it. They sold about 44 butts off of it. So it was, it was pretty awesome. They, they done good with that. That was Thursday and Friday of last week. So, on your um, registering for the live barn, mm -hmm. how much is it? I don't know yet. Depends on how many departments we get and then whether we can split that or not. Okay. I, I, I'll have a number later on when I figure out how many people's going, how many departments is taking part in. I do know also it's not in the report. There's some state training that's coming, like we always do in the fall months. I know we'll do another pump class, another 64-hour required class. The state's coming here to teach. We'll host it. Swanee's got some big stuff coming probably the second week of August. Um, the state guys are going to their department, so some of our guys will go take part in that. So, Any questions on the fire side? So, so you're still painting and repairing fire hydrants? Yes. We've got so many, so many projects going, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and you got your, your engine back. Yes, engine one's back. I did fail to put that in the report. Engine one's back from Brindley. It was having an overheating problem, if you recall, from the pump testing. That was under warranty. That was warranty work. It was in Brindley Mountain for about probably a month, a little over a month. It's been repaired. They repaired a light tower and a, and a foam leak that was on the truck. Uh, before it was overheating on pump, we'd done a pump test on coolies when it come back, and it was, I think, like 195 degrees was max max temperature, so it was perfect. It's running great right now. Great. And I should point out, Chief, if you'll excuse me, you tested it when it came back, as well as really doing their work. Yes. You ran your own test, so that's right. It's important that we test these products when they return. Yes. So thank you for so that. So now engine two is up for a test. We'll we'll get that. Uh, Kevin and I and AJ will get engine two to Coolies and get a pump test on it. That's an annual that has to be done every year on for for ISO records. So it's it's due now. We'll get that within the next couple of weeks, hopefully. So, do you have a timeline on the ladder truck repair? I have no idea. Uh, hopefully it'll haul Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, any other questions on the fire department? Then if you don't mind, would you move to uh, building inspector? 
Yep, building inspector. There's been eight eight building inspections has been done this month. This is you know all aspects, rough ends, finals, along with serve occupancies. There's four new building permits that's been issued and created. Um, everything's still going well on the building side. Calls, inquiries, code referencing, and stuff like that. It's uh, starting to build a good relationship with the contractors, know them, and, and they know me, and it's it's working out well on it. Still chasing the state test. Right? I've got to get all my state tests and all that stuff done. That has to be done by the end of November, so I chase it, and just as time allows to get those done. Is there anything on codes? Codes enforcement. There are six code violations been served throughout the town this month. Um, there's a certified letter going to a property owner regarding tent living within city limits. Waiting to hear back from that. That should be served within the next couple of days on by mail, USPS. There's two code files that's been closed or satisfied. One case has been officially served by the PD with a September court date for a citizen here in town. Okay. Are Any we, questions on building or ordinance? Yes. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to ask about the tent living. Yes. These are homeless people that are on someone's property? Or? I, I'm not sure. No. I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's. I know they're living in a tent. I know that um, they've been in a tent for a few months, and we're trying to remediate it you know, uh, with a heart and, and try to get them where they need to go the right way. Um, so we're pursuing the property owner now to, to have them take action. FYI, I found a tent down in the woods by my house that had uh, some sleeping stuff, cooking stuff, had a machete. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I need to follow up with that. Have you been camping? <laughs> Not me. Oh. <laughs> so. Did I do Well, if you would uh, look into that. Yeah, that's that's fine. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Uh, let's go back to Parks and Rec. Anything there? From any of the aldermen? Do we have anything on Parks and Rec? We don't. No. No. No? No. no. Okay. Yeah, I have. What? I think we might as well put that under there. Hang on. Let me just bring that agenda back up so everybody can see it. Sorry, I lost it. Um, but I sure keep finding the police report again. There we go. Um, I, I've been talking with the chief. We've got, uh, with the police chief, um, we had an incident where there was some vandalism on the Mountain Goat Trail in a portion that's inside the city limits, and he and I were talking about possible options, and it, it he, he brought to my attention that our ordinances predate the trail being there, and in fact, we don't really even talk about greenways at all in our ordinance, and he thought it might be helpful for future enforcement. There are some ordinances we can bring to bear, but his thought was that for future enforcements, we might want to um, alter our code to specifically talk about greenways because we've got a fair amount of them in our city limits, and, and as the, the bridge and downtown projects work, we're going to have more so that we can have um, pretty clear enforcement uh, operations. So I wanted to see, check in with the council to see if maybe it made sense for us to think about that probably in a workshop and then maybe see how we need to change our ordinances to make sure we have the tools to do some enforcement. And I bring it up in Parks and Recreation because it's a park. It's a linear park. So. Okay. Well, we certainly can look at that and come up with proposed language and then present it. Okay. Anything else on Parks and Rec? Utility manager? Mr. I don't have much counsel, Mr. Wilson, do you have anything? Sure. <clears throat> Just an update on a few items. Uh, the DuBose tank, we started uh, putting the specifications ready uh, to prepare for bidding and the repairs and coating for that tank. Uh, the city tank is completed and uh, finished. And so on TDEX list, we had both tanks that had to be coated and repaired um, along with the repairs at the basin at the water treatment plant. So we finished the city tank. We're now working on the Bose tank. Um, the water treatment plant, we got the report back from the geotech company and the concrete was not damaged to a point where the basin had to be totally uh, 
replaced, which is very good news. Um, and so we have had a contractor out to look at it that uh, applies trenchless um, lining materials uh, that's a good fit for this application. So they, they've been out, looked at it a couple weeks ago uh, to get input from them on what their thoughts are about what it, it's going to take to make that repair. That will have to be bid out because it's over the price of what the town can pay for just through a simple, we're gonna hire this contractor to do the repair. Uh, so we will um, come back probably next board meeting with um, some steps on what it's gonna to take to, to bid and, and get that done. We cannot have that out of order at the same time as the DeBose tank. So we're gonna to have to, to, to make sure that those are are not going on at the same time. And TDEC is aware of that. They're okay with that. Uh, we're taking steps to identify and, and make repairs, and so I think they're they're good with that. Um, the rehabilitation project, the ARP and the ARC grant funded uh, project, we're currently working on the design um, and hope to have a some preliminary design complete within the next 30 to 45 days at the town like to come in and sit down and, and go through here's here's what we're going to repair get some input and uh, let you know timelines discuss bidding uh, we've opened several bids uh, in the middle and eastern Tennessee over the last several weeks the bids are coming in high um, there's not very many bidders we, we have a lot of bidders that are interested on the start I look at the project decide if it's easy or hard and then they choose not to pursue it after that so that's that that type thing will become more commonplace over the next 12 to 18 months with all the work that's going on because unfortunately or fortunately money has free grant money but unfortunately so does everybody else and so there's a short supply of contractors and so the timing of getting projects bid out it will become paramount so we'll need to discuss what strategically is the best time to put that out and fortunately you know I wish I had a crystal ball to, to tell you uh, we've had some utilities that we had to put a project out twice we have one that we are putting out for the third time uh, which is not a big deal but that costs money every time you bid a project so we need to try to minimize that as much as possible but uh, so that those are discussions that we'll need to have in the next month or two about the timing of the money since it it has to be encumbered by november of 2024 so we have until next november to get someone under contract to do that we have until november or september of 2026 to totally spend that money uh, which we have time to do that so we've got a little bit of time, but not a lot of time because again, we're in line with every, everyone else. Uh, so we're keeping that in mind as we put things together. Uh, traditionally, the end of the year and Christmas time is not the best time to put a bid out. Um, traditionally, the first of the year is a good time, but you know, everybody else is gonna be trying to do that. So just <coughs> we'll need to see how some things go. We have some bids that are opening over the next several weeks we'll see what what's happening with that and we'll be able to to provide some input here in the next several weeks as to what what we're seeing around this area well based, based quite frankly excuse me quite frankly i think if we move quickly we'll be first in line as opposed to waiting till the day before the deadline I, if yeah, there's we, funding there i'd like to move on whatever projects we can move on obviously yeah we definitely don't want to be wait till the deadline but we def we don't want to be in the midst of having in, in, in a big rush it's like going to a fast food restaurant oh, right. yeah. at times it's crowded and then you come back in 20 minutes and nobody's there and so kind of the same thing with with bidding it's just it's a little bit of hit or miss so but yes to your point that's we definitely don't want to be last uh right now we're we're somewhat ahead which is a good thing so we're well posed to to proceed ahead but there's others that are getting close Understood. to that queue in line as Nate? Well. 
Based on what you just said about uh, contractors cherry picking, where would you put our project in the e easy or hard spectrum? Um, it, it's not hard, but your location is not easy. Um, <clears throat> you're, it's going to be a small project, which is going to be a strike against you. Uh, they want the big, high money, gravy type projects where they're going to make a lot of money, and um, you'll get bidders to. They sniff it out. Contractors know if there's only going to be one bidder or two bidders, and so they'll throw a bid in that's astronomically high because if they get it, that's great for them. They'll make a lot of money, which is bad for us because we're, it costs a lot, and we're not getting as much done for the same dollars. And so your location is going to hurt you. Your The size of the project probably is going to hurt you. The, and the number of specialty contractors that it will take uh, will probably play against you because they're they're being asked to come work on other projects as well. Uh, luckily, we we have a good relationship with all those trenchless contractors that are on all these jobs. A lot of them around here are our projects, and so that we can have conversations with them about it. They know who we are. They're familiar with our type projects. They know what they're getting when they bid, which is very helpful because they're used to working on projects that we design. And so that that's a good thing. Uh, but the bad thing is there's, like everyone else, they have labor issues. They don't have so many crews, so much equipment. They can't be everywhere at once. And so they're going to pick the easiest, uh, which we have projects and up and downstream of of Mont Eagle and Nashville and Murfreesboro and Chattanooga and so it may be that this is the in-between that could fill a gap and so timing could could be helpful there. That's what I was going to ask is whether your contacts either locally or regionally whether whether it makes sense to try to do um, to, to do some joint bidding or some some joint releases I, I have no idea how complicated that is I just you know Tracy City's about to do the same thing so does it make sense to think about it in that term? Or? We wouldn't. We wouldn't be able to do a joint bid, but we would certainly talk to the contractors that would that would that do this type of work and ask them. You know, what does your schedule look like? What, you know, if we bid this out now, are you going to be interested? Or are you just going to say no? Well, I'm not interested until March, or and, and get their input on what their availability looks like. And again, that's coming from a contractor, and we, you know. Go for what they say, somewhat. But uh, but we do have good relationships with them. We can find out the best information that we can and disseminate that to the town, and we can make some the best decisions we can as far as timing goes. But any just other something questions? to consider. Oh, I'm sorry. Any other questions of John or Travis on utilities? Um, I did. Susan Dean reach out to y'all. I asked her to send I don't you know a note. Who Susan Dean is okay. So um, they she lives right behind the the tank downtown, and I, I asked her to send y'all a note so that everybody would be aware that she's in communication with the contractor. There apparently was a breach in the the wall that they put up to contain everything, and they've got rust particles stuck to the top of their house and, and filling their gutters and on their, and the contractor has said that he's going to come in at his expense and pressure wash and clean and make them satisfied but I just want to kind of put it on record so that if there is a continuing sure. problem if we're going to bid out another tank and those folks are interested I, I, I want to make sure that they're satisfied with what happened the, the contractor admitted that there that some of the rust escaped the containment and so they, uh, we have every reason to believe they're going to make it right, but they haven't yeah. yet. So I want to bring I'll it make up. sure to follow up with that. That's I the first I've heard of. It. So yeah, I will definitely yeah. make a note. And yeah, that, they will definitely take care of that. So yeah. just she's got some pictures and some documentation, and yep. she's, she's been working with them. Yeah, they're a reputable contractor. So if we there's issues, let me know, and I'll follow back up with them to make sure that's taken care of. The other question I had was about the design on rerouting that line at DeBose Street. I think, um, Keith, I think it was you and I that were talking that were saying you all wanted to put a package that up and see if you could bid that out. You were going to have Travis do that. Is that is that on your radar screen at all? No, we haven't done that. We haven't done there yet. Okay. Yeah. We're, Sewer or water? It's water. It's just about making some cross connections so that we can abandon some old water line. Okay. 
and a place. It certainly be part of the Dubois project. That's where you have water. You're going to have folks in here that have those capabilities. So we're trying to get some old transite out of the line, and it's a it's in a spot where we're going to build trail on top of it. And, and Keith has some concerns that I share that we might tear it up running a dozer that close to it. Yep. And we want it out of the system anyway. Sure. Yeah, we can certainly do that. So how do we follow up on that? Is that I'll be in touch with Keith and Travis okay. and you, and we'll come up with a plan. I'll make a note of that as well. Thanks. Anything else from the Alderman on utilities? Okay. Keith, do you have anything on roads? I don't. Okay. Anyone have any questions on uh, roads? Okay. Uh, then I guess we are at um, Planning Commission. Uh, they will be dealing with a couple of issues that have been brought to my attention. Uh, it's just kind of uh, mentioning to be ready that some developers are interested in the town abandoning some streets or closing some streets. Uh, and as they go through the Planning Commission process, they'll come to us. But uh, with the activity and development in Monegle, uh, there'll be requests from developers for different items. So I just mentioned that in passing. Uh, of course, tomorrow is the Planning Commission meeting at 4 o'clock here. So if any of you can attend that, uh, it's also that is also being recorded as this is, correct, Ivan Michelle? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Alderman report. Anyone have anything? I do, I've got a question. Why are we changing the times? Tomorrow, Planning Commission at 4 o'clock. Yes. And then our city meetings are changing. Why are we changing times on all this? Isn't to it in the charter we're supposed to be here till 7? I mean, start the city meeting at 7? No, it's in the city code that uh, we have them uh, the last Monday of the month. Right. And I don't recall if there's a code or a time or not. Well, actually, it's in consideration of other people. Uh, our planner comes from Chattanooga. That's an hour ahead. So if we start at 6 o'clock, that's 7 o'clock for him. If it's an hour meeting, that's 8 o'clock. And then a drive back is at 9 o'clock. But he gets paid so, to be here, so. Well, yeah, we're just trying to help the situation year-round in all sorts of weather. Same thing with the city meeting. We have city employees here that would either hang around till 6 or can have an earlier meeting and go home, such people as uh, Travis Wilson, who is at every meeting. Um, does he have to hang around till 6? So it's something that maybe the uh, council can discuss. I had asked for suggestions of different uh, times, and we can certainly look at that. I understand some people get off from work at 4, so 4.30 was picked as a time. I understand also that we can't meet everyone's schedule, as I said earlier. And I also understand that there are other ways of seeing what the meeting is if they cannot be here. So it's something that we can discuss at a point in time. But that was some of the thinking to change. As I said earlier, it was a test. We'll see. If it works, that's fine. If it doesn't work, we'll uh, try to come up with another time or stick to the 4.30. I personally don't know what difference it makes. Those that can make it, I've noticed it's the same folks that have come to almost all the meetings. And those that can't tell me they saw me on Facebook or GCTV, not me, they saw the meeting. So it's something to be discussed. It's just trying to be a little more considerate of the people that are impacted by all day work and then coming here at 6 o'clock. So um, old business, if I can get to that. We I have think the there, are other, there are other people that would like to do an alderman report. And, well, I would, for, and I'd oh. like to comment on Doreen's well, uh, comment ahead. as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to put out there respectfully that we move the meeting back to six o'clock the way it's always been, and we leave it there. I think that uh, I, I know from the census data that the majority of Montego residents work. Uh, I know I work, and uh, certainly. Um, I had a hard time getting here today and would continue to have a hard time getting here. I also hope that Keith and Debbie and John and all our employees are given the option to come in late, you know, the following day, or, or we're flexible with their schedules to account for the fact that they're having to come to an evening meeting. But I think since we're serving the public, we want to have our meetings at a consistent time. 
um, where the majority of the public can be here. Um, so I, I, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and have that conversation and make a decision um, so that we can put this issue to bed. I would like to leave it the way it was at 6 o'clock. And I would like to have a workshop the week before the city meeting. That way everything is on the agenda that we're going to discuss. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing's taken off of it. I've gotten complaints from people that are unable to get here at 4 or 4.30. So that's the folks that are not going to complain today are going to are not here because I couldn't get here. <laughs> I had somebody who wanted to come to this meeting too and they're still at work. Mm -hmm. So we, we had discussed when, when we took office back in November that we would try to do two workshops a month and we have not been doing that. One of the other things that has not been happening is the department heads have not been asked to come to the meetings. And I feel like the council, because of that, has less information to work with. And to your desire to keep meetings short, it's hard for us to keep meetings short when we don't understand what we're being asked to vote on. Well, so, there are a couple of issues. That's why I'm not sure it's worth the debate now. But I thought we reached a point in time with the workshops that it wasn't necessary to have two, and they would be an on-call basis. Perhaps I was misinformed or misunderstood, but that's my recollection. Uh, to bring in department heads to talk once a month, I don't know. I don't know why you can't contact me to discuss any issue you may have with any department head, and I would move to resolve it. Okay, so quite frankly, I challenge your comments, Mr. Wilson, but I'm not sure that we need to debate this for another six hours. Go ahead. There's a very strong... Uh, contention that the department head should be allowed to come to our workshop. Well, if we can come up with a valid purpose, that would be fine, I guess. Well, I've seen we'll workshops with other, uh, other times where department heads came, no one had anything to say, and they were hanging around till 5 o'clock, I believe, was the time back then. So if there's an issue, absolutely. If there is no issue, just to see them and they say, what's new, and they say nothing, and then they go home, that's what I call counterproductive. But at and the same you know what time, I'm talking about, so. but at the same time, if we have a question to ask them, we have to go through you to ask them when we can ask directly. But may not be always we have questions, but there may be a time when we do. Well, that's the point. You'd have questions that would come up once a month within the month. If you ask me, we can bring them in and discuss it. In other words, I don't know what's so magic about monthly meetings when they're working, <laughs> some of them basically around the clock. But that's my position. I think you all know my position. Um, I don't know why we're discussing it now. That can't be resolved uh, once we have a little more discussion and input, maybe at the next workshop, which I am announcing to be uh, August 7th. I just need to know what time is best for you all for a workshop on August 7th. If 5 o'clock is a strain, do you want a workshop at 7? Keith. Or 6? I meant 6. Keith has his hand up. Yeah. Being well, mine and Travis's name was brought up, have we missed a meeting? No, no. No. no we no, haven't no. had any. We, we were, sure. no, but we're, we were told that y'all didn't need to come to the meetings. And I think the issue for me is that we were elected to, to serve the community and be involved in what's happening in all aspects of the town. And it feels like uh, no we're not getting needs. good information. And part of that could be having you all there. And could, do you all get comp time off when you show up at a meeting after hours? Because I had always assumed that you did. And if you don't, I think that's a real issue we need to deal with. That's why perhaps we should have a little more discussion at the workshop of August 7th. So I'm still waiting to hear a time for August 7th. If you can't make 5 o'clock, Nate, what time can you make? We have always had the meetings at 5 o'clock. And 5 o'clock is easier okay. than 4.30, but, but not as easy as 6. So, okay. um, But I think it's a reasonable compromise for the, for the staff uh -huh. to, to try to do that at 5, try to do that a little earlier so everybody can go home. So uh, for the other aldermen, is 5 o'clock, August 7th, a good time for the workshop? Can we say that? Yes. yes. Thank you. I think 5 o'clock is good, but I think it needs to be a week before the city meeting. No, that way the we agenda is set. That's fine. At our workshop, we can set a schedule. We can have it every Monday at 5. We can do whatever is appropriate to run the city. But um, <clears throat> I think a lot of this can be resolved uh, August 7th. 
five o'clock at our workshop. So thank you for that. Now, you've gotten copies of the Southeast Tennessee Development Contract. Uh, first, let's have a motion, and then we can have discussion if there's any. Is there a motion to accept that contract? What, what is our contract now? How is it different from this contract? It's basically the same, except there's a 10% increase for the two-year period. The cover letter of the contract says that they've made changes to the contract itself, but we don't have access to the old contract, so it, apparently there are changes beyond that 10%. Not to the uh, basics that I've spoken to and negotiated with Chad Reese. There are other things that come into play, like if they're going to work on a general plan, that might be an extra. If there's a lot of meetings, that might be an extra. None of that has applied to us in all the years they've been doing it, so it's basically a 10% increase. Every the time there's an extra meeting. updated maybe? with a new scope of services, so please read carefully. Which I did and discussed with right. Chad. But we haven't, and you're asking us to vote on it without showing it. Well, it's a shame that you bring this up now, but That's if you good. don't, if there's no motion, then I don't know no what we'll do tomorrow night. I'm sorry? Have you not read it tonight? I've read this one, but I haven't read the old one to compare it to, to know what the new scope of, ser scope of services is. And if I, if and is this going to be an increase of 10% every time they have something extra to do? No, that will be negotiated. And if we indeed want it, we may not even need their additional services. I know some citizens have talked about some alternatives to Southeast Development for planning services. Have we looked into what other options might exist for that? Not with this timeline, no. And that would be a lengthy process, I dare say including review of our present zoning ordinances and the work that Southeast Tennessee Development does in comparison to what others might offer. Well, according to this, our contract with them has been expired for already for a month. What, how are we operating under with them now? Goodwill. Okay. I told them I would bring it up tonight. I apologize for not discussing it at the last meeting. And um, they said, fine, let me know what you decide July 31st. Well, given the consistent criticism that we're getting from some of the members in the community, I would at least love to know how the scope of services has changed between the contract we're currently operating under and the new contract. The basic services scope of services has not changed. It's additional items that we would request, and that's subject to negotiation. Night, I'd like to compare the last one because this is a two-year contract, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're going to be meeting next week. It's something we could talk about at our workshop. I don't suspect they would mind waiting one more week. Yeah. So could well, we you do can't that? vote on this at a workshop. It would have to be a well, meeting of the mayor and alderman. Contract. Yeah. And put the voting off till next time. Whatever you want to do, I'll tell him and see if he comes up tomorrow or not. Can you send us a copy of the old uh, contract? I thought we had done that. No. Of the current contract? The old one. The, 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 oh, the current contract is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have some questions about the current contract. Is the, the current contract you're asking us to approve as well? Um, it one my major concern is that into the scope of services, it talks about um, sort of a loosey-goosey definition of what meetings are they're covered, um, said, but it says it does up to 24 um, meetings a month, one BZA and one planning commission meeting a month. And then later on, it says that um, we don't have BZA meetings every month. We may have three BZA uh, meetings a year. So that, that seems to give me a surplus of nine meetings that I would think I'd have to work with them on. However, down below, later in the contract, it says that additional meetings might be subject to, to additional charge. And so I, I just, I'm wondering out loud if it makes sense to, to just nail them down on a per set number of meetings and then, and then know what we're getting into. This seems, 
when I read all the scope of services, it seems like it's pretty much to, up to everybody's discretion what's extra and what's not extra, and it counts a lot on goodwill, which I think is important. And um, if it's a contract, it's it's kind of supposed to lay down parameters. Well, again, that's all subject to negotiation. This is talking about their fixed formula for those numbers. I'm sure if we need them for many meetings in a month, we can negotiate that. Or maybe we don't need them for many meetings in a month. I don't think they're going to accrue month-to-month, meeting-to-meeting. I think the basic contract is what you have. It's a 10% increase. Anything above and beyond would be negotiated, and that's why the language was left with some flexibility. So you're saying this is likely the same language that's in the old contract? That's what, I, that's what I'm not clear on. We've been operating under this contract for several years now? Basically, yes, because we haven't called him for anything else. Or on you, or anyone before. It also says that uh, meetings occurring after regular business hours should be limited to a maximum of two hours. That's your strike time. Now we're here, now we're back. You know, he was referring to meeting times, and uh, he, he understands the distance from Chattanooga to Mount Eagle and the time change. And it does actually schedule them to come to after business hours, yeah. which which I thought was was good. I'm so, I'm going to suggest we wait on. I would too. <coughs> okay. So is there a motion to accept this contract? <coughs> okay. Then I'll call them tomorrow and say there was no motion to accept. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, nothing under old business. New business, a business permit. Is anyone here from Taco Bell to talk about their business permit application? Yes, sir. Congratulations, you've opened, I see. Yes, sir. There are a few cars in the parking lot. Quite a few cars, yes, sir. Okay, what can you tell us about your operation in a word or two? What do you mean by that? I'm sorry. Uh, hours of operation. Oh, hours of operation. It going so far? Uh, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. is what we're currently at. I'm sorry? 9 a.m. to uh, 12 a.m. Does Do any of the aldermen have any questions? Just glad to see you in town. Welcome. Glad to see you we're all. glad to be here. I appreciate everybody supporting us, um, letting us use the town hall to do interviews, so we appreciate everything. Are, are you able to tell if most of your business is from the interstate, or is it college and townspeople? Well, I think it's hard to tell the first two weeks, just with the grand opening. I know we don't have our sign on the interstate quite yet, so we're interested to see. So I think we did Did 70. you have a grand opening, or are you going to have a grand opening? Pardon? I mean... She's just, looking for free tacos. <laughs> free tacos. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can come by and see me anytime. No, that was just kind of our grand opening. Um, yeah. We just opened up and went with it. <laughs> we right. think we did like 11,000 on our first day. We we're expected to do about six. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, we appreciate everything. Congratulations. Thank Are there you. any other questions on Is this there permit? Anything that the city that you need from us? Uh, not that I know of as of now. Uh, I, I know we have, I mean, y'all been extremely able to work with this. So if I have any, I'll be more than glad to reach out. We appreciate everything y'all have done already for us. Well, you came in with an awesome site plan, and uh, you had it up in a matter of weeks. Yeah, yeah so we have, uh, we're, we're a franchise of like 350, but our building team is, we try building about 10 Taco Bells a year, so... They kind of have it on lockdown on how they want it, where they want it, and they're pretty great at what they do. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. Thank you all so much. Okay, is there a motion to accept the application? I'll make a motion to accept the application. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, the last thing we have under new business the community center and the senior citizen group is becoming active and they want to do a fundraiser uh, for bricks, for benches, for landscaping in and around the library community center area. 
I need a motion to open a bank account so that it's in our minutes to create that account and it's used solely for those purposes. Their income will be the sale of bricks and whatever fundraisers they come up with. Uh, there's no charge for any fees, so it would be strictly donations. So can I have a motion to open an account for the community center uh, for, ex well, just open an account. I move to make a motion to open a checking account for the senior citizens landscaping fund. At the community center? At the community center. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I have a question. Sure. Well, let's get a second first. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Why would they need a separate checking account? They can't go through the... City for their it will go through the city. That's why I need a motion to open the account. Uh, rather than have separate accounts everywhere, wherever there is a bank account that is part of the city, it goes through the city. And uh, Debbie Taylor, as a city recorder, signs those checks. Uh, as you know, many checks are co-signed by myself or a designee. We don't have a separate account for the athletic team donations, do we? No. Not yet. Well, we don't have athletic teams yet well but we have for many years and we've never had a separate account oh we do for the fire department and it and this is easier to keep up with. is it at their discretion to spend out of it or is it still ours well they tell us what they want to spend out of it but we don't have to check it's their account basically but we just take care of it okay <coughs> is it budgeted through the town budgets no. no. There shouldn't be anything other than the sale of these bricks or their like their yard sale, stuff like that, that they collect money for. That exactly. Will go into that checking account. There's no obligation from the city no. to fund it. They're doing their own fundraising with their, quite frankly, smaller projects just to get the appearance outside, trying to help the city improve the look at uh, the community center front. Any further discussion? I'm sorry, go ahead. And because it is at the community center, I'd say it's why they're going through the, cent through the city. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would just do it privately. But okay. the city's not out anything. Correct. Any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll open the account and wish them well. It's really mm -hmm. an improvement of as you can imagine, through the approach to this complex. So I'm thankful that they're doing it. Uh, Mr. Lay, do you have any questions or comments yes. as promised? Question, question. Okay. Comment was, I, I thought the Mountain Market was supposed to look good and as far as participation and from vendors and visitors, whoever. They tell me it was probably the that, largest they've had. I think, uh, did a great job. They had 140 uh, booths, which was so probably the largest. Good. And I was wondering, since uh, they were having the other one at uh, uh, Swiss, yeah, you know that that might might hurt Mon Eagle, but it didn't didn't seem to. Or if it, it did, awesome. it would have been a whole lot bigger. <laughs> I had a vendor tell me it's the biggest weekend he's ever had. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I think right. that was it. Didn't rain. Was, uh, was a pleasant <laughs> surprise. Uh, uh, you were talking about for the community center. Previously, any money that the city, in the name of the town of Mount Eagle, the comptroller requires that to be in the audit, and it can be in special accounts or it can come in the general fund, and then have a have a department just like street aid money comes in. That's go street aid and, and all that stuff. But uh, you can do what you guys are talking about as long as. But, but I think it will be under the audit, won't it, Debbie? Under funds received and dispersed, and and. Uh, it's, it's, it, the law still applies the same, uh, whether it's a separate account or a general fund account and, 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 and that. But anyway, that's not what I was going to talk about. You're exactly right. Thank you. Uh, you're talking about Southeast Tennessee Development Contract. Uh, I, think, I think the council needs to consider uh, in, the, in the contract uh, to, to clear up some items in the past that uh, the, the Southeast Tennessee Development District has taken the position uh, in, in reviewing site plans and, and, and recommendations and uh, for instance uh, I know a person that had a site plan that was submitted and, and Anya said it was deficient in 
I think, three areas. Those deficiencies were corrected, sent back, and then they created some totally different discrepancies uh, and, and uh, sent them back, and, and I was that person. So, so I called, and I said, uh, and one of them was the Mountain Goat Trail right away. Uh, I, I said, this has, there was three things. Mr. Barry has corrected those, and, and, and why are we not good to go? Well, the team feels like, I said, what do you mean the team? And she said, well, after, uh, at our meeting, Chad brought up this and brought up that, and, and, and I think that's problematic. I think if you've got a contract with somebody that, and they're looking at site plans, uh, they need to get it right. And well, are they going to bill you then when, when, when they say uh, site plan's not right, we'll have to look at it again next month, and, and, and uh, we're going to do this three times or four times? No. Uh, they believe they've corrected that by providing us with a checklist and it's a one-for-all checklist instead of the back and forth. So presumably, and we'll see how it works, if all the boxes are checked, that should end it. There can't be a back and forth because they're claiming they covered all those topics. Well, I don't know that. They make up the rules as they go Well, uh, in the past. And, and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and if it, the contract says we're going to start billing additional billing, you can oh, bet no. your bottom dollar you're going to start getting billed. Yeah, it doesn't say that. Uh, and and uh, like if you're building something and, and you get a state electrical inspection, uh, and that's pretty important for a building is the electrical inspection. When, when they come and do their electrical inspection, uh, and, 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 and if you fail, they cite the deficiencies uh, in their report and in, in their inspection. And you correct those deficiencies. And when, when the inspector comes back for a reinspection, they don't go back and, and, and look for other things and, and ask about the mountain goat trail. That's right. They come back and look at those deficiencies they've cited. If they're corrected, you pass. And, right. and that's the way, to me, that's the way this ought to be. Uh, they need to do their job right the first time. And they don't need to delay and delay and delay and delay. Uh, and, and, and they've done that in the past. I think that's cost us a lot of business. Well, it has, and, and, and the main thing I come here to talk about was, was the fact that there's still activity of people wanting to come to Mont Eagle uh, and do commercial businesses. And, and, and the atmosphere needs to change to the people, uh, whether they're wanting to buy uh, two parcels and or a part of one parcel and combine it with another and and, and uh, like the mayor said uh, close the road well usually everybody freaks out and says close the road uh, well actually there's roads closed all the time uh, uh, for different reasons when, when McDonald's came uh, on South College uh, they just abandoned part of, of uh, not South College West College West College used to go all the way through to Renz Nest Road. Uh, and, and the city went down there and just chopped it off. It didn't put in a cul-de-sac, and, and which was against the planning requirements, against every rule we had. But they just go down there and said, the road now ends right here. Uh, and and, and if, uh, you know, if you need a fire engine, or nobody can turn around. If you pull down there, you got to back out. Uh, and, 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 and that's not right, but the city, right. city did that. Uh, anyway, you've got people wanting to come and do business. I get about a, a contact once a month uh, about questions about sometimes it's property that I own or own part of, and, some, and a lot of times it's other property, and they ask about what what's the deal with with, with something. And, and, and uh, I, I think now would be a good time with Southeast Tennessee Development District to set a new path that they work for the town on Eagle, you guys, and they need to be told what the program is, and then you work all this other stuff out on the billing and the meetings and all that, but uh, it used to be state planning, and, and it was basically the same, same setup, uh, but the state of Tennessee operated it, and our contract was with the state of Tennessee. And the state of Tennessee got out of that business, and Southeast Tennessee Development took over that and, and, and 
we did used to I think we paid twelve or fourteen hundred dollars a year for planning services. I mean we got way more than what we paid for. And and they made their money up on administering grants. And and, and if they're gonna go to a true cost on building the town of Mont Eagle uh, then it's no different than your CPA that does your audit. It's no different than your city attorney that charges you. And then you need to look, I think, and see what else is available at what cost. And, and, and these aren't the only people in the world. Uh, and some people say, oh, they're the only ones. Well, you know, what, what if they die? Well, y'all, y'all just going to quit? You know? Uh, but now's the time... To, to, make, to get in control of that, I think. And I would encourage the council uh, to do that. Uh, when, we, when we started meeting at the chaplain in his prayer, uh, uh, talked about the wisdom of, of King Solomon and, and help us with our needs. And then we talk about people living in tents and, and, and you've got a tent behind your house, Doreen, that, that people are, and, and we've got homeless people in Mont Eagle, and we've talked about this before, and, and, and it's like the council has to my knowledge, no program or no one addressing these issues. Is that a planning commission? Is that a, uh, you know, what would that be uh, to look at that, to improve this, uh, not just take these people and send codes enforcement down there and say, uh, you got to move your tent. Well, that really doesn't work. There's homeless people everywhere. You know, you can move them from one place to another, or you can buy them a bus ticket and send them to New York City, uh, like Texas does. Mm-hmm. And, and but but really and truly, you got 25 percent of the people, according to, to the census, that that are below poverty line on income. Uh, affordable housing is a problem, and, and, and there's and I know you guys got a lot of things to do, but but there needs to be something set up to start looking at addressing affordable housing. Uh, the homeless. Why are they homeless? Uh, there, there's a, a dire shortage of workers. In, in the businesses here in Mont Eagle. They, 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 they can't open because they don't have employees. And it's not just Mont Eagle, it's everywhere. But, but there's no, no, no people up here to work because there's no place for them to live. Uh, and and, and uh, it, it's not going to get any better until we change and try something different. And, and that's the leadership, I think, that you guys have been talking about, that when you got elected in November, you, you were going to do certain things. And, and let's address the needs before we start to look at our wants and, and, and uh, try to improve the, the quality of life for the, for the people that are in need. And, and, and as I've said to you guys before, the rich folks can take care of themselves. So You don't the, have to worry about it. I, I think you're right. And you, you may know, but I don't think everybody else in, in the crowd knows, is that the, the Town of Mont Eagle was approved by the Architects Foundation for their Communities by Design program. So we are going to be beginning... Uh, and that's what I wanted to, during Alderman report, I was going to talk about that, but I'll, I'll do it now. Um, that uh, starting in the fall, probably late September or early October, we'll have the first meeting of the planners where we'll bring them, invite them to town, and begin to talk about what those issues are. And affordable housing is one of those issues that we've already highlighted as being a problem in our application and one that I hope that we can all work together. And I know you're, you're going to be on that committee um, and, and I appreciate you serving on it. Um, I mean, I'm excited to get that process moving, and I hope it'll help. There are also other conversations happening about uh, affordable housing, which is good. I know the Lindhurst Foundation, as the mayor uh, indicated, uh, provided financial support for this planning. Uh, they've also said that once the plan is done, they're interested in helping us with some implementation, and they have some uh, a, some pretty good expertise in affordable housing, and so. I've had a conversation with them, with the South Cumberland Community Fund, and also with some other countywide organizations about how we might pilot a project to do that. So it, right. it, it, it needs to happen, and, and, okay. and I hope that it will. Uh, kind of changing gears, uh, on our development, there, there's some things been working, like uh, I, I would ask, like the Bose Conference Center, Mayor, has that been sold? No, it has not closed yet. What's the status? They expect to close within the next month or two. There's an issue that they're researching. They didn't share that with me, but it's nothing from what I've been told that will kill the deal. It's just they haven't closed yet. Do we know what the use is going to be? They were Not officially. The rumor mill is a boutique hotel. What? Boutique hotel. Boutique hotel. Yes. What's that? 
I have no idea when it's have you ever tried it on? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't do boutique hotels. Fancy and expensive. It's what? Fancy and expensive. Fancy and expensive. Okay, okay. Uh, well, that's okay. All, all indications are it will close, but the this particular snag, which is probably not worth dis disclosing to everybody, is is unusual. And, and related to the nonprofit selling to a for profit, so yeah. they don't they don't have any sort of timeline on the resolution. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and and, and Debose has lots of other undeveloped property, and and, and, and would, would would really fit in well uh, on some land available for some of the stuff we talk about, like affordable housing and and, and other things uh, that's really not suitable uh, for much else but that. Over over the years. Uh, Debose, uh, they own this property uh, across the street where the post office of the bank is. They own that property uh, where the mental health group home is. They own that property, the nursing home. They own that property, uh, and, and uh, they've been good neighbors when when uh, the diocese, uh, east, west, and middle, ha had Debose Conference Center. And, and in in the eighties, they worked with us every time we ever went to Debose and asked about property, and and, and they they were great neighbors and members of, of the community and, and, the, and the purchasers are interested they're in they're aware of the communities by design process that's going to happen they're interested exactly. in some residential exactly. solutions on some of their other properties so um, at least in the conversations that i've had okay well that's it it's all conversation there's nothing concrete obviously until right, yeah. they close and then we would move to the next well, step and, for and, development. And, and i would hope then we would start it sounds like you guys have had some some discussions and, and we would start off on a good step with them and yes. when they come up with a site plan to do things that it's not like it's been in the past. Exactly. One thing I will say if I may have misunderstood you, this contract for Southeast Tennessee Development is only for the planner and the planning commission. Mm -hmm. The other work that they do for grants and senior citizens and all that oh, they yeah, have as you realize yeah. Yeah, they all get that. their fees out of the different thing if right. we use them. Yeah. Well and well and, and, and they're usually they didn't make money on the contract that they had with the town of Mont Eagle uh, when it was uh, state planning, uh, planning, right? And they did mapping and, and and I mean it was it was a bargain. It was a token amount. I don't know what, what what's the amount now for the old contract per year. I think it's included in this fee. What the is mapping. that fee? They are asking for. Ninety-eight twenty-five annually. Nine thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah. Annually. Yeah, and, and and that's a bargain for what they do. Uh, but but keep in mind, they still need to be under the direction of this council. It doesn't well, need to be what they think the town of Mont Eagle needs to be. They need to be told what their mm -hmm. mission is, and, and that's been a that's been problematic the last couple of years. Understood. Uh, and uh, moving along, uh, the Hart and Family Partners Project, what's the status of that? Still in court. As you know, they filed a writ of certiorari, as I mentioned last month, and uh, we have not gotten a decision from the court yet. Okay, so that could come at any time, or yes. does that mean there will be a hearing, or there will just be a, an opinion issued? My understanding of the writ of certiorari that I've dealt with in the old days, it will be an opinion from the court. So there's no theory, hearing, nobody goes and argues the facts? Or? To my knowledge, no. Okay. But it may be different here. What it basically says is, dear court, please review the lower court's ruling or the local governing body's ruling. So I'm not sure that there'll be a verbal presentation. Okay. Uh, status of RBT, some, uh, the, the, the gossip is that they're fixing to start back. Have they been uh, file a site plan or get a building permit? Or? No, no building okay. permit. And they have to do that, is my understanding, uh, because of the, the the timeline. It ran out the year or whatever it was. You and that's what about. the attorney and Travis lawyer are working on. Yes, the expiration of. They the do have file a new site plan, or they don't. They have not yet. That's something. Are the they site required to file a new site plan? No, the present site plan hasn't changed. What they did to help Taco Bell get going was part of the record service. Those lots, as you know, were not joined. So the RBT site, um, nothing has happened to change the footprint 
of that parcel. So if that site plan was approved previously, then that would not be resubmitted, but the building permit expired. That's my understanding. So they would have to just apply, apply for another permit, and there yes. was some regulations. You can't go back and charge anybody when the, when the building permit expires like it's a new new deal. It's, Correct. It's basically administrative cost you can recover for issuing that permit. Is that correct? That's right. That's what I've been told. Our city okay. attorney said it's not a profit center. Okay. It's, as you say, administrative costs okay. to issue a permit. Are there any uh, any other lawsuits that the city is, is facing at this time? And anything new? Uh, so I asked this question a couple of months ago, and I think there was a city employee that had sued the city. And uh, oh, that has since been resolved. So, so that we're not under. There's nothing going on other now. than the, the heart and fan, whatever that fancy word you use. Well, it's not mine, but thank you. It's a writ of certiorari. Spell that. C e r t i o r i. Me. <laughs> oh, was it wrong? <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, and the other uh, gossip going about is, I would ask if, if you or any member of the council has uh, asked the city attorney uh, or discussed about uh, implementing a city property tax on the property owners in the town of Monte. That's something, unfortunately, that I, and I haven't discussed it with the alderman yet because I don't know what's involved. Uh, there are two sides to financial statements, as you know, income and expense. So I'd like to analyze the expenses and see what income matches that. Uh, water and sewer, as you know, is a separate enterprise fund. So uh, the tax would only impact, if there ever was a tax, the general fund. Oh, I understand that, but, yeah. but my question is, have you or any member of the council made any attempts by talking to the city attorney mm -hmm. or to each other about the possibility mm -hmm. of no. implementing a property tax on the property owners in the town of Monet? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. We don't talk to the attorney. Okay. So, so uh, there, that's just a false rumor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll report that at the liar's table at Hardy's in the morning. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, seems like the oh, last month was it last month you guys done an ordinance on changing how you uh, the hiring and firing of employees? Was that the second reading last month? It's been several months ago. Well, okay. Several months yeah. ago. But but that passed on second reading, and that that uh, uh, that's the that's the ordinance, and that's what you're operating under. Yes. Okay. And, and, and uh, they said that the, the mayor that you fired somebody the other day, and the department head didn't do it. Is, is that true? Uh, no. He's with um, Keith. Yeah. Yeah. No, the department head that we carry Who was him the department under. Department head. It would have been Keith. Okay. So and we're, we just break down the employees for payroll purposes by department. Uh, so there was no rhyme or reason. I'm sure he's right. done other work for other areas. Right. But okay. Well, again, they said that the mayor fired him instead of the department head. That that, that, that you had called him in and told him that his uh, services were with, no longer required, and he was that's terminated. Right. And he understood, and he said okay, and the department head was with him. Oh, okay. They didn't tell that part. Uh -huh. Okay. That's all I have. That's Thank why you. you. Got to the source. Yes. I think. Oh, uh, talk about the Marriott deal, the status. So, so uh. well, there's some engineering and some work to be done. But uh, we met with uh, the contractor and developer of Marriott. They have some work to do, uh, and when they get that out of the way, which is engineering work uh, and some utility work, then they will proceed with uh, hopefully breaking ground by what they say late fall. Which is probably October, November, and, and they just dis they discuss it. Eighty five units, eighty five units, and, four uh, story, getting close uh, for the groundbreaking, and yes, and, and it looks like this is just finishing up the the, the water sewer where it comes in at, and and uh, the electric was met. Well, that as well as elevations and other yes, considerations right. that yeah. were discussed. Yeah. Uh, Travis, if you have anything to add, John, you have anything to add, but. <coughs> yeah. 
There you go. Uh, we've exchanged emails since our last meeting on okay. the information we discussed at the on our site visit. So uh, they're they're trying to get information back to us, and we're trading emails. And it seemed like everybody was on the same page as far as knowing what had to be finished up, and, and, and there was not any any known major hurdles in in the discussions. I think the ball the ball's in their the ball's in their court. Yeah. To provide and they to seem to realize that and know yep. the things that their engineer had not done and, and that they had to do and act like they were going to take care of that. That's correct. Their engineer was copied on the email, so they're aware. I haven't corresponded okay. with them directly, but yeah. but they're aware. So, the so hopefully it. that thing will be a new source of income for the city uh, on the occupancy tax and sales tax. And, and, In uh, about a year. Yeah. yeah. And... and, and uh, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So Thank you. I think they had, they they were talking with Anya before she left about their. I, I'm assuming it was the preliminary site plan. Uh, I'm assuming, and, and but they told me they were back and forth with with the planning and and, uh, and I think the guy Chris said he had worked with Chad uh, at at Kimball or Jasper there. And that uh, he he knew him and worked with him and 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 he didn't see that there would be any any problems on this site plan. Uh, they they've done several of the hotels, and, and Marriott is much more stringent in their requirements than than what ours are. So uh, he acted like that, that was a piece of cake. So, so uh, he he did not think there would be any issue. Uh, on on his site plan, so yeah. it was just, and he didn't think so on the engineering. And, but he thought his engineer had made us aware of things that we weren't made aware of. And, and I'm just trying to make sure, you know, that, that it's a smooth and, and gets open, and, and uh, we have 85 new units, and and uh, and there's other people calling wanting to do different things, and, and we need to set uh, we need to set an atmosphere of where we play to the rules. And, and and when you when you play by the rules and we play by the rules, there's a smooth transition to get this done, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's it's beneficial uh, to to the investors that opened the business. And I think Taco Bell was a prime example uh, of, of them coming up here and and everybody saying their site plan went above the requirements and and, and their construction crew, uh, you know, put it up. It's open. Uh, I didn't know I could open without a business permit, though, so I was glad to see that I can go ahead and open and then come next month and get my business license. So uh, that, that enlightened me. So, uh, but anyway, thank you all. Thank you, Dean. Any other citizen wish Katie? I just wanted to um, make an announcement in case this helps with anything. Uh, there was a wedding band found in the Country Mart parking lot last week. So if you know of anyone who's missing a wedding band, or if you're missing a wedding band, you can call me, 931-924-3301, and describe it to me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope it wasn't a rowdy fight. <laughs> Any other citizens wish to be heard at this time? Thank you. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'd, I'd like to actually finish the alderman contact. I had four things on my list, and I haven't gotten through them yet. Is that okay? Sure. The, the, the first thing was the meeting timing, which I think we've talked about, which is great. Um, the second thing was the announcement about the Architects Foundation um, mm -hmm. acknowledgement. We dealt with that. The third uh, thing had to do with um, the uh, stormwater ordinance that uh, Travis and I worked on several months ago. And then you were going to take over, and I think it's been about three months since we've had any update on that. And uh, one of the ideas was that as things like RBT get get uh, ramped back up, that we have something on the books that helps us deal with our stormwater problem. So I was curious if you could give us an update on that. I've had a conversation with uh, Travis and with Jim Waller, and uh, we are working on a stormwater ordinance for the areas that are affected by stormwater in this town. As you know, there is some water that just goes over the bluff, and there is no pipe to catch it. So we're looking at uh, the total town picture right now. RBT, according to uh, Mr. Waller and uh, TDEC, 
seem to have satisfied their stormwater requirements to date. So, so when will we have that project? When will we, as a council, have something to look at? Is it we can have something by probably not this next workshop, but I've got a draft checklist of items that would be included, uh, so as not to go way down the road and to my say, well, why are we doing this, this, and this? And so I've got checklists that we're working on that uh, we can put in front of the, the council and <coughs> see what items you think are pertinent, which items are not, and then we can draft them. So probably the whatever the second workshop date is not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Does the EPA have regulations on stormwater? Uh, the state has what's if you're MS4, um, which Monaco is not, and there's state regulations. And then if you're not an MS4, then it's up to individual municipalities to have their regulations, or they fall under some. State guidelines, somewhat, which are very general. On Chattanooga and other big very cities, have stormwater tax. Very yes. MS4 cities. What does that mean? So they're based on size and population. They're yeah. they're required to adhere to <coughs> certain regulations. Yeah. But yeah, they come in and measure your parking lot and, and uh, send you a, a tax bill based on the size of your asphalt or yeah. concrete. Uh, the big cemetery in Chattanooga, they don't pay anything because they got gravel. And, and, and there's another one over there nearby that, that is paid, and, and they pay, last I talked to them, like $50,000 a year stormwater tax uh, to drive for, for the cemetery. So. So yeah, that's what we, uh, Travis and I, when we were having a conversation about it, is that we, we don't want to do anything that would smack of being an MS4 community because that would require us to take it over. We just want a simple, um, simple regulations re regarding runoff, particularly within the Laurel Lake watershed, recognizing that it's a pretty small urbanized watershed um, and, and as much as possible have all that happen at the site plan review phase so that we're not getting involved in, in these the regulation of, of runoff per se. We're just working with new development to make sure that there's um, people are thinking about their stormwater before they begin construction. Well, Marriott, for instance, they talked about theirs. Their, their engineer had initially uh, designed it to be under the parking lot and hold it. And, and one of the things EPA big, used to be big on was temperature control. You know, when rainwater and stuff hits the hot asphalt and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So. They, I think they were going to do it underground under the parking lot, and, and that was a no-no to, to, to the uh, developers. And so they want to do a retention, or I call it a retention, or whatever the right word is, uh, a holding area. Uh, and, and, and now that's problematic, a little problematic because uh, uh, they need a little more space uh, in order to make that work. And, and, and we're going to work with them to make sure that happens. But the feeling is it will go down to the interstate where it currently goes now and travel the ditches. So uh, well, Keith Joe, had spoken to them about that and well, the Joe natural Hunter, flow. Uh, uh, my partner on the other property, I talked with him, and he's a big developer in Tullahoma. He says we need to designate an area down there for all anything that's developed yeah. on the top to, to be a, I call it a community uh, retention thing. And I don't know anything about it. Joe acts like he deals with it in Tullahoma. And, uh, you know, he said, we'll take care of that when, when we get something from uh, the developer and, and make sure and make that happen. So I'm just relying on Joe Lester uh, and what he does, uh, his knowledge and, and what he has done in Tallahoma. Yeah, it's probably cheaper to combine them that way. Yeah. Okay, what was your fourth point? The fourth question was about uh, the contract that we didn't talk about tonight. I thought we were going to talk about water software contract. Did we? No, we're going to talk about that at the workshop. We're going to talk about it at the workshop. We'll okay. Sure. Well, then we don't we don't need to discuss it. We'll we'll bring that up then. Any other questions or comments? I'd like to make one comment. Does yes. the uh, reality of where we're at with the uh, recently uh, completed uh, mountain goat sidewalk from the dollar store up to the liquor store? It just really looks above grade really for all of us to see now that it's finished yep really a nice job we got that big culvert appendage out of the 
out of the Ace Hardware uh, exit there that is gone now. You don't even see that. Thanks, Senator Bowling. She yeah. brought all that money to the table. Yeah. Well, it looks nice, and uh, I think if we can follow that, we'll be flying. Well, they'll be picking that up, as I understand it, from the bridge work. Yes. From Ace and across, so hopefully, yes, they will so it continue looks nice. that look. I get a lot of requests that their thankfulness that all the barrels are gone, so good to hear. Yeah. If there are no other questions or comments, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make such a motion. Is there a second? Second. I don't think there's discussion. Is there any discussion? No. Don't want to assume anything. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.